Hey guys, it's Sarah and today I'm going to be doing my summer wrap-up video. I've read quite a lot of books between my May wrap-up and my September wrap-up, which is going to be <laughs> included in this. I think I've read 20 books, I want to say, in those months, so I have quite a bit to get through. Let's get started into the books that I have been reading and I am going to go in order <laughs> of the books that I read and I will try to give you my star rating and maybe some thoughts that I had on them while reading, though a lot of them are a while. A while away. They were a long time ago, so <laughs> let's just jump into those books. I'm going to start right where we left off with Emperor's Blades. I was, when I made my May wrap up, I believe I was currently like in the middle or a little more um, past the middle in this book, and I was enjoying it. Uh, from what I can remember, this book was a lot of fun, very atmospherical, um, reminded me a little bit of Blood Song. I just got that writing and like coming of age story going on in here, um, lots of different characters. Uh, interactions and stuff like that. Um, I don't remember too much from this book though. Um, I remember the beginning more than the end, um, so I'm not 100% sure, you know, what I completely thought about it, but I did end up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars and I will be continuing on with the series because I think that this author's writing can definitely develop and the characters can develop a lot throughout the rest of the books. The next book that I read was actually Lindsay's pick of the month for me. She picked this for me June for June and uh, it was also going to be my playing catch up book and that is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I did film a review on this and I'll probably post it if you guys want to see my full thoughts on this book, um, especially since I filmed it right after I read it so a lot of fresh thoughts there. Um, but I really enjoyed this book. This is probably one of my favorite Rainbow Rowell books. Um, it was definitely surprising. I didn't understand, I didn't realize the heavy content that Rainbow was going to attack in this book um, when I was going into it but there was a lot of um, really great things in here. I feel like the conflicts going on were really interesting and developed and I really like a contemporary like this, um, you know, more along the lines of a dark contemporary. It's not necessarily dark but has heavy themes within it and, um, you know, a cute little relationship. So definitely really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the 80s references. Um, it reminded me a lot of Adventureland. I remember in my review I kept saying that um, except for in Adventureland the characters are older and they don't necessarily have to deal with such heavy topics but um, it definitely gave me that feel and I really enjoyed that so uh, yeah I think I gave this a four and a half stars. Only reason why I can't give Rainbow Rowell five stars is just because of the endings of her book. I, I don't know if I've expressed this before but I'm definitely an indies type indies huh, endings type of person. The ending is what makes the book for me so if the ending isn't uh, fulfilling then it kind of I guess it kind of bothers me, so yeah. But um, I really did enjoy this, and like I said, four and a half stars. The next book that I read, I did buddy read this book, and that is Inda by Sherwood Smith. I read this with Connor from Connor O'Brien and Chelsea from Chelsea Outlaw. They're amazing people, and I loved hearing their thoughts on it. I enjoyed this book. Um, this is definitely a very coming-of-age fantasy, and um, there was a lot going on. I definitely enjoyed the first quarter of this book, um, maybe like the first half. Something happens to the characters where they kind of have to go on a different adventure, and and uh, that half of the story was a little bit lacking for me. I felt like there was a whole new world we had to figure out and kind of catch up with. Um, and I was just getting started and enjoying this world. You know, all the different characters and names and political figures and stuff. I was just trying to figure those out. And then we had a whole new set of uh, world and rules and things. So um, I remember that being the biggest reason why I um, didn't necessarily enjoy this as much as I could. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. And um, I will be continuing on with the series. I do think once I get my um, claws, talons, whatever, I was going to say talons, and then I was like, no, that sounds silly. Once I get my talons in this world, I feel like um, I would really enjoy it and really enjoy the characters, especially Inda. I really think he is a very interesting character. So um, yeah, but I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Then um, I went to my local comic book store bookstore I believe this was like the first week I started my job they had the first let me see I think it was just three at the time maybe the first three single issues of Saga, um, which is chapter 27, 28, and 29, and so I ended up picking those up and reading them. Really enjoyed it. I was so happy to have the single issues. Um, I believe I got the single issue 27 right after I finished uh, volume 4, I believe. Like right right when it finished, I, I think I got it. Maybe that's what it was. And then I got this one and, and this one. So it was these three. 
and um, I was really excited to get them and uh, you know then I created a pull box at my comic book store and that was exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah so far these are the only single issues that I have picked up um, but yeah so this is issue 28 and I read all of these um, around the same time I'm pretty sure and I just devoured them and then uh, I had to wait a little while and then this bad boy came out which is chapter 30. So I feel like I'm missing one. Chapter 27. Wait, maybe these were in order. Oh, yeah, that's 29. That's 28. Okay, whatever. Single issues. Who's gonna keep track? Anyway, so I read chapter 30, and it was amazing, and that concluded volume 5 for me, um, and I read it and loved it and gave it 5 stars. All of these were 5 stars. The story, the way it's developing is really interesting, and I feel like the um, characters are growing so much as a family, and I'm really excited to see more from that and, um, you know, get to see a lot more from this world, and I feel like there's so much more that can be explored and this has so much potential and I'm really excited to see how Brian K. Vaughn does that. Brian Vaughn. K. Vaughn? K. Vaughn. I feel like I can't say Brian Vaughn. It has to be K. Vaughn. Okay. Maybe that's because I adopted the name Kayvon in my head as his last name. <laughs> the next book that I read was Nowhere But Here by Katie McGarry. This was one of my most anticipated reads for the year. Um, I have to say, I don't know, Chris and Ashley is up there too, but I was dying to get my hands on this. I even requested it for review and I didn't get it, <laughs> but that's okay. And when it came out, I was just anxious to get my hands on it. I think I got it two weeks after the release date because I just, it was, timing was bad. And I read it, I read it in one sitting practically. I think I read it in, in two sittings, two afternoons. And um, I, I just love this book. It was amazing. Um, this has to do, this is a Katie McGarry book, and if you don't know Katie McGarry, she wrote the Pushing the Limits series, and her books are very much that dark contemporary, I was talking about, heavy themed contemporary books. And this is no exception. Um, this is, follows a girl who meets her dad, I think long lost dad, and he's in a motorcycle club and she ends up having to stay with him because of some um, territorial issues going on. It's very extreme and very entertaining. Uh, it's definitely reminiscent of like Chris and Ashley's um, MC series and also Sounds of Anarchy. Um, it has those themes in there. Basically I really love this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I really love the relationship and it. it was really cute and there is a sequel coming out or companion for this and it's coming out soon so I'm really excited to get my hands on that. I love Katie McGarry. I will read everything that she writes. She's one of my favorite authors. Um, I just really love her writing and her romance stories and everything surrounding her. So yeah this one was um, also another book that I read. The next book that I read was Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan. Riordan? Rick Riordan. Um, I also buddy read this with Sam over at Novels and Nonsense. We really enjoyed this book. Um, I know she's a lot further in the series than I am right now. I I don't know. I think The Lost Hero at this point, uh, when I was reading this, The Lost Hero kind of was a little bit better than this one. I felt like uh, a lot with this series, I'm, I'm trying to ke play catch up in my mind of what's going on. And if you don't really know, there's basically in this world, there's two different camps now. So in the Percy Jackson series there's just Camp Half-Blood and now we have a different camp and um, it follows, I don't want to get too much into it, but it follows a different um, set of characters and different set of mythology and so kind of surrounding the same same mythology but just in a different time, different place. So I felt like that wasn't really necessarily explained too much and uh, especially in this book I felt like the first book was okay well what's going to happen and then this book was like okay where are my answers so um yeah I didn't necessarily enjoy that but I did give this a four and a half out of five stars I love my characters in this book um I love the story I love the writing I think the adventure is so much fun it's so fast paced I know I can read like 100 or 200 pages of this book in no time at all so um definitely enjoy this series and um, I'm really anxious to finish it out <laughs> next one was also a buddy read and that was Captain's Fury by Jim Butcher this is the fourth book in the Codex Alara series and I read this with Caitlin over at Kitty G and we enjoyed this book. She enjoyed it a little bit more. I think she read it in one sitting or two sittings and it took me a little while to get through this one. Not necessarily because of the content, more just my mindset while reading it. Um, I definitely still feel like there's something missing for me in Jim Butcher's books but this one was my, one of my favorites out of the whole series. Not Jim Butcher's books, I apologize for the Codex Alara series in particular. Um, I just feel like there's something missing and there's something that needs to be there and I don't know exactly what it is but um, yeah this one 
was no exception and I ended up giving it a four I think a four stars out of five and um, yeah I really do want to finish this series so so keep an eye out for that. The next book that I read um, was the first book in the Legend of Eli Monpress series and I believe it's called Spirit Thief and this is like I said the first three books I believe there are four or five books in this series um, this is a huge uh, onubis a huge bind up of all of the books um, but yeah if you don't know already Rachel Aaron is the writer of the Fortunes of Pawns books uh, Rachel Bach is also Rachel Aaron and so I was really excited uh, Fortunes Pond was one of my all-time favorite series of all time ever of all time I love that series I love the writing and everything about it so um, I definitely wanted to pick up more Rachel Aaron or Rachel Bach and um, this is one of her series and I've heard a lot of good things um, like I said I've only read the first book so far I haven't read the second book yet or the third one for that matter <laughs> uh, and I enjoyed it I think I gave it a four out of five maybe a three and a half out of four uh, three and a half out of five stars I think that there was some uh, just a few things uh, missing again I think that the world building just wasn't there and the characters weren't totally coming across like she wanted them to um, and the, it was just very uh, uh, plain that's the best way I can explain it and I'm really excited to get more into it because I definitely think that this world can be very big and that she can build on it I have all the faith in the world that she can um, you know take control and just make this series you know amazing so I definitely am going to continue with this but uh, yeah for the first book I gave it like a three and a half four stars all right and the next book that I read was Hunting Ground by Per Patricia Briggs. This is the second book in the Alpha and Omega series and this follows Charles and Anna and they are both werewolves in a werewolf world <laughs> or paranormal world and um, it's kind of about how their relationship grows, how they met, and all the different uh, trials and tribulations that they have to go through. I really enjoyed Charles and Anna. Uh, I really enjoyed their story and the things that they have to struggle with. Um, I definitely think that the problems that I had with the first book, this book cleared up a lot of those problems that I had and it just made the series exciting for me um, and I'm really excited to continue on. I have now realized that this probably isn't the best spot to start with Patricia Briggs so I will be halting my Alpha and Omega series until I get more into Mercy Thompson books but I definitely enjoyed this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars I think or 4.5. I really love Patricia Briggs' writing. Her role building is a amazing. Her characters are awesome and I just like her little PSA moments. Um, she does have those throughout and so I really like those and um, I am just yeah enjoying Patricia Briggs a lot right now. So after I read that book, um, Hunting Ground, I got into a massive book slump to the likes that I have not seen before and I went like three weeks without reading a book, uh, without reading anything. I listened to audiobooks but I didn't finish anything which always made it worse. Um, this was about the time that Felicia Day's book came out and I was reading a lot of uh, Drums of Autumn, the fourth Outlander book and so I was just kind of trying to listen to, out, out, Outlander, trying to, listen to audiobooks but I was watching a lot of TV and just not reading at all and then I was like you know what screw that I'm gonna pick up a book and just read it and I picked up Altered by Jennifer Rush. This is a first book in a trilogy and it follows this girl who um, has these boys living in her basement basically and her dad performs experiments on them and it's for the government and it's like this whole secret thing that she kind of helps out with but doesn't really know why and it's kind of like um you start out and she just has followed this routine her whole entire life and then she kind of is curious she's always curious and she just wants to know more and then things go freaking ballistic and just craziness ensues so um yeah definitely on the run contemporary or on the run dystopian it's very tropey and i feel like there's a lot of dystopian books you can compare to it but at the same time um it was exactly what i needed it was very fast paced there was some romance kind of some romance intrigue and um, lots of just crazy action scenes and um, exactly what I needed at the time to get back into reading and uh, I think I gave this a 5. I might have given it a 5 stars, maybe it was a 4.5. Um, but yeah, the writing was awesome. I feel like this was a great first book. And also, I haven't continued on with the series, and I'm not 100% sure if I will, because the way it ended was okay for me. Um, I didn't necessarily need to know more, and I could have just left it at this book, and we'll see if I do. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it, and um, I just really liked it. I really did. I liked the characters, and I liked the story. It was very intriguing, so yeah. So then I had the motivation to finish uh, Felicia Day's memoir, which is uh, You're Never... You're never weird on the internet, almost. Um, if you don't know, I'm a huge fangirl of Felicia Day and Will Wheaton and Geek at Sundry in general. And so when this came out, I knew I had to pick it up and read it, and I did. Um, it's a great book. There are pictures throughout, so um, I listened to it on audiobook. And I know that Felicia Day provided a PF. 
PDF? A PF. She provided a PF. <laughs> a PDF of the pictures. So, um, and I know when you're listening to audiobooks, she references that PDF and it's like, oh, go look at that PDF. But uh, yeah, this was really interesting. Um, I got to know a lot more about Felicia Day, uh, which was exciting. And I'm, I just really love Felicia Day. I loved it when she was talking about her acting. I think that was probably my favorite part, um, is when she was getting into acting because, of course, she plays one of my favorite characters on Supernatural. So, um, it was exciting to hear her stories about that and, um, you know, how she ended up there and what other acting career she's had. So, uh, I'm really, yeah, really enjoyed it and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. And the next book that I read was Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. This is the first book in the Mercy Thompson series and this was amazing. Okay, I gave it a 4 stars and I think I gave it a 4 stars because I do like the Alpha and Omega series better so far, but of course I've only read, um, now I've read the first two books in this series, so, and so I'm kind of even, but at the time I was reading this I definitely like Charles and Anna's story a little bit better. Um, I do like Mercy Thompson. I think the biggest problem I had with her was that she fell a little bit flat. I felt like Patricia Briggs was trying to express the character and she didn't necessarily achieve that character um, or at least not for me. So um, yeah but I'm really excited to see Mercy grow into the character that I know she will and that she can be so definitely excited about that but I enjoyed this. It was a fun, fun story, action-packed, werewolves, coyotes, vampires, paranormal alike. So it was great, and I'm excited to read more. Then I finally took the plunge and read Chew Volume 1. This was really interesting, very different than what I was expecting. I know this is a lot of people's favorites graphic novel. My feet are killing me. <laughs> um, I know this is a, a lot of people's favorite graphic novel series, uh, especially Lindsay loves the series, and I was a little nervous going in. I have this thing about zombies. I get creeped out by them very much, and this is kind of about a guy who can eat anything and know where it came from, know exactly what's in it, and so he uses that ability because he is a detective to um, eat flesh and kind of figure out what happened and he uses the ability to solve crimes and so uh, I was a little bit nervous about it but uh, it wasn't as bad as what I thought it would be definitely got really grossed out in this first one but after this first volume after like I got into it um, I wasn't as grossed out so yeah but I enjoyed this the art style is really good okay so it did it it broke no it didn't break it died the camera died so I'm not sure where I was at in particular um, but I know I was talking about volume one of Chew and how I enjoyed it I believe I gave it a four out of five stars. Um, the storyline was interesting, the characters were interesting, the premise behind it is really interesting, the art was great, lots of square, triangular, angular I guess is the best way to describe it. So um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I think I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book that I picked up was Heartless by um, Gail Carriger. This is the fourth book, fourth book in the Parasol Protectorate series. This series falls, follows Alexia Terabody and she just has adventures in this paranormal 18th century London and um, it's very good. This one was one of my favorites out of the series so far. I had some issues with it though. I think that the content of it was really great. I like the story and the plot a lot in this one. I loved the characters in this one as well. I think Alexia Terabody is growing a lot as a character. Um, however, there were a few things in this story that bothered me personally um, and I think it is just more of a personal opinion. I had some issues with the way that she thought of herself and the condition that she was in and um, it bothered me a little bit and uh, I'm not gonna lie I was, felt a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. Um, I do know that the author was trying to you know say something different than what I took away from it but um, all in all it did bother me enough to lower the star rating so I did give it a four and a half out of five stars. Overall though um, Another big thing that I would love to see in these stories is I would love to see more of the male lead. Uh, I feel like Lord Mackin or um, Connell would be, he's just such a great character and to develop him and see more from him would be just amazing in my opinion. So that's another reason why I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, but again, I loved it. I think I actually gave it a 4.5. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that it was a 4, 4.5 range. <laughs> then I went ahead and picked up volume two of Chew and um, this was great. I loved this one a lot more than the first one. I gave this one a four and a half out of five stars. Um, I do think that there's just something I'm not 100% clicking with and I think it's mostly just character driven so um, I'm sure once I get more into this you know graphic novel series I will love it a lot more but again loved this. Art was the same style. So the big overarching plot of this um, story is that there is a prohibition on chicken and so there's a lot of criminals out there trying to fake 
chicken or black market have black market chickens and so that's kind of like the overarching reason why Chu is a detective and like what his job is is to basically figure out who's selling you know chicken um in the black market and, and just things revolving around chicken so um it's very uh, I guess just silly uh, idea but it's also really cool so I really like this one a lot I love the characters I love the relationship between the two guys here on the main cover and um, I just think that they're great and I can't wait to read more the next one that I picked up was blood fever no dark fever dark fever by Karen Marie moaning moaning um, I really enjoyed this book I gave this one a four out of five stars I have this thing against fairies and I believe that this is all about fairies Yes, Immortal Fae, I remember now. Um, it's all about Fae, and I just have a problem with Fae um, in general. I just, the stories to me don't click necessarily. I just don't like the, I just don't like that paranormal creature. So um, I think that's what kind of, you know, hindered my experience a little bit with this one, just because it reminded me so much of why I don't like fairy books. Um, but at the same time, it was really good. It was really different than what I was expecting. The structure in the world of the Fae are very different than most books. And so it wasn't necessarily uh, tropey in any way. Um, there were a few things where I was like, oh, that kind of seems unrealistic or the writing was just a little bit too you know just too and it could have been more meaningful I guess um but I really liked it I think I gave it a four out of five stars and I'm really really excited to continue on with the series I feel like I will love the series as a whole I'm definitely excited to read more and see what's going on and the next one that I picked up was Bloodbound by Patricia Briggs this is the second book in the Mercy Thompson series this one follows a different um mystery of sorts and it has to revolve it revolves more around the vampire and the vampire lore and what's going on in that world I really enjoy Mercy um, um, I think she grew a lot in this story or I feel like I connected a lot more with her in this one than the previous one so really enjoyed it I gave this one a four out of five stars then I picked up Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan and these are the books that I've read in September so far I think I might have read this one in September as well um, but this one I read in September and I just finished it yesterday I believe um, it is a big chunker of a book uh, but I really enjoyed this book um, this one was my favorite of the series so far getting to see the characters all of the characters in a interact and um, see all of them together and just the missions that they have to take on and just different things going on in this story. Um, I really liked it. I really liked the um, combination. That's what I'm gonna, I don't want to spoil anything. So the combination in this book was great. I have two more books left. So this is kind of like the middleman here. And um, yeah, I think it was my favorite so far. And I love Rick Riordan and I love Percy. <laughs> I gave this book, I gave Mark of Athena a four out of five stars, I think. Then I read finally Lumberjanes by Noelle Stevenson. This was great. I knew I was gonna love it before I even picked it up, um, especially cause Lindsay read it and loved it and she said it was really great. But the story, it just seems fun to me. I just feel like this graphic novel is gonna be fun um, and it was a lot of fun. There is um, the, the art style in this book is probably my all-time favorite. Overall I really liked it. The story was fun. Um, the characters are interesting, very diverse characters and I'm really excited to read more um, in this this series. And the last book that I read is um, The Drums of Autumn by Diane Galvin. This is the fourth book in the Outlander series and this one was a chunker. I definitely got into a reading slump and I read this one. Uh, I started it in June and I just finished it now. Um, I've slowly been reading it. I have taken it a little bit slower just because um, I feel like the contents of this one... Oh, thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Um, at least you got a little excited. There you go. Okay, well you can't lay on me. All right. Where were we? <laughs> now I have a big ass Lucy in my lap. Wait, I was talking about Outlander, so, um, ew, hair that felt like a spider freaked me out. Okay, so yeah, I read this one in, um, you know it took me a while to read um it's definitely one of the longer ones and i really enjoyed this book um i loved the parts where jamie and claire were featured there are some other characters that are featured in the story as well and so their parts were a little bit slower and i didn't necessarily care too much but um if you don't already know i don't know if you want to know but um they travel in this book to america in the 1700s so um there's a, a different scene, you know, it's a different scenic part of um, Outlander, um, which is, you know, fairly common. I know in the second book they travel to Paris, and then in the third book they travel somewhere else, and then in this one they're also somewhere else. So there's definitely different scene, scenic views throughout the series, but um, this one was the most exciting for me because I love American history and I love America in the 1700s. So it was great seeing that and seeing them build. Um, it was definitely exciting to see them build their life in America in that time period. So. 
Um, yeah, overall, I think I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 stars just because uh, there were a few things towards the end that I didn't agree with, and so it's kind of hard for me to, um, you know, be satisfied in what she was making the characters go through and the different things that were happening, so... I think that's one of my bigger complaints um, of this book. And then also, like I said, the slower parts with the day for different characters um, definitely took its toll on me. But overall, it was a great book. I loved it. I love the series. Um, I can't wait to read the next one, which I've heard is the most boring. So hopefully that means that it's got lots of politics in it because that is things that I don't find boring, but other people might find boring. So <laughs> um, I would love to have more politics in the American uh, colonies. I think that would be just amazing. So um, I'm really excited to get to that one. And I will also be listening to that one on audiobook continuing my trend. Halfway done with that series now, which makes me feel really good. I think that is really all that I have for this video, guys. Um, let me know down below what you guys thought about any of these books, and uh, if you've read any of these books, um, you know, let me know down below what you guys thought, and I hope that you're doing well. You know, what have you guys been reading? I hope that you guys enjoyed, and um, you know, just let me know how you guys are, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great day, and read more books.